when you mix creativity with electronics, it becomes a masterpiece. Producing something original and worthwhile leads to the creation of a number of great new useful household products. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to create this Arduino based touchless concrete clock. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay specializes in manufacturing of very high quality, low volume, colored PCBs at a very budgetary price. In addition to standard PCBs, you can order advanced PCBs, aluminum PCBs, rigid flex PCBs. They also provide PCB assembly and other related services which can meet your need at the greatest extent. I always love to generate a 3D model of my product before creating it in real. This not only gives me a better view of what the final product is going to look like, but also helps me in finding the correct measurements of the final product. So I went ahead and used the free Windows 3D Builder to generate this 3D model. The on-screen black bar is where the TM1637 digital clock module will sit. The gap in the circular concrete frame will house the 5 blue LEDs that can be turned on or off by moving your hand over the IR module. These two holes are for the IR module. The concrete base will house all the remaining electronic components in it. Based on my 3D model, I designed this 2D template. You can download the template from the link provided in the description below and print it on an A4 paper. Before going ahead, let's have a look at the schematic diagram of the digital clock. The heart of this circuit is an Arduino Nano. The TM1637 digital clock module connects to the D4 and D5 pin of the Arduino. The DS1302 RTC module connects to the A1, A2 and A3 pin of the Arduino. The two white LEDs displayed on both sides of the digital clock connects to the D11 pin of Arduino. These two LEDs flash three times every hour when the minutes counter is reset to zero. The IR module is connected to the D6 pin of the Arduino and controls the blue cluster of LEDs connected to D12 pin of the Arduino. My initial plan was to have two to three push button switches connected to the D2 and D3 pin of Arduino to set the time of the clock. However, in the final version, I did that by adding an extra line of code in my program. I'll explain this in full details when we discuss the code. Using cardboard, I created all the concrete molds. Cardboard was my first choice as it's very easy for me to cut and bend it into any shape of my choice. The holes in the mold you see are for the ribbon cables. Sticking the semicircular piece on the left hand side of the inner circle will create the gap for the blue LED cluster when we pour the concrete into the mold. Alright, so this is how it looks like after putting all the pieces of cardboard molds together. Now let's pour some bricky sand in and around the mold to hold it nice and tight when I pour the liquid concrete. Making the sand a bit wet will make it firm and will also remove all the unwanted air from the sand. Cool. Now let's go ahead and pour the concrete into the mold. Don't forget to compress the concrete mixture as you pour it. This way the concrete will reach all the necessary places and will also remove the unwanted air bubbles from the mixture. I also added few nails inside the mixture to give it a bit more firmness. This step was absolutely necessary as my first design completely collapsed because it was not very sturdy. Once the setup dried up, I removed all the sand and extracted the piece of art from it. Alright, now let's start installing the electronic components to the top section of the clock. The 4-digit LED clock module will sit inside this gap. I'll cover it using a black plastic flim, which I extracted from a wrapping paper. For the back, I'm using a compressed wood board. Based on my initial design, I'm going to make some holes in the board and install 3 push button switches to it. The blue LED cluster will be hot glued in the gap at the back of the circular section. I used a plastic cutout from a milk bottle to cover these blue LED clusters. The white color of the plastic gave it a gloomy look which was absolutely super awesome. I hot glued the two white LEDs to the back plate before putting it against the concrete. Frankly speaking, it was an absolute challenge for me to hot glue the back plate on the camera. After struggling for a bit, I did that properly behind the scene. 
Now that we are done with the top section, let's start working on the base of the clock. For the base, I prepared two cardboard boxes with open top, one slightly shorter in height than the other. The two straws you see on screen will create the hole for the IR module. The hole on the side is for the AC power cable. The cardboard block I just added is to create a hole on the top of the base where the circular top will sit. Then it was just a matter of pouring the sand inside and outside the cardboard molds, followed by pouring the concrete mixture into it. Same as before, I added some nails to give the structure some additional firmness. Once the concrete dried up, I extracted the concrete base from the sand and carefully sanded the structure to give it a nice and smooth texture. Okie dokie, now let's install the rest of the electronic components inside the base of the clock. I used the same compressed wooden board to create the base plate and then one by one soldered and hot glued all the electronic components to it. The IR module I used in this project is one of my self-made DIY IR modules. If you want to know more about this module, please check out my tutorial number 21, all about IR modules and how to make your own DIY IR module. Now that we have the top and the bottom ready, let's go ahead and join them together. I created this cardboard thing to hold the concrete when I poured the concrete in the hole. This cardboard block will also prevent me from pouring excessive concrete inside the hole. The flap in the middle is to hold the wires preventing them from getting mixed up with the concrete. After pouring the concrete, I left it for drying for almost two days. So this is how the final setup looks like. For this project, you need to include the Arduino RTC library and the TM1637 display libraries in your code. You can download them from GitHub from the link provided in the description below. Let's start the code by creating an instance of the RTC module, followed by defining the variables used by the RTC module. Then define all the LED pins, followed by creating an instance of the TM1637 module and defining all the variables used by the module. Next, define the pins used by the IR module. In the setup section, the first two lines can be used to attach an interrupt to the code if you are planning to use the push button switches. However, in my code, I'm not using the buttons, so I commented them out. Next, I have set the brightness of the display to the max value 7 and added the show number deck x function to include the colon in the code. Next, I defined all the pin modes used by the attached components in the code. The highlighted bit can be used to set the time of the clock, set the correct time, uncomment and then load the code. Once loaded, comment the lines and then load the rest of the code again. In the loop section, all we are doing is reading the hours and minutes from the RTC module and displaying it on the 7 segment display. This code block is used to toggle the colon on or off. This section is used to read the value of the IR sensor and either turn on or off the blue cluster of LEDs. This bit of the code is to flash the white LEDs when the minute counter resets to zero. If you are planning to use the two push button switches to set the time or to set the alarm, go ahead and uncomment this bit of the code and add your code block to it. So this is how the final setup looks like. Do comment and let me know if there are any scopes of improvement. Thanks again for watching this video, I hope it helps you. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos. Thanks. See you again in my next video. Bye now.